Okay, and we're back today. So today I'm going to give you guys, uh, to start out with, we took a quiz last period and um, the practice quiz. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to give you guys an assignment and I'd like you to see if you can write a function that's going to uh, use slices. However, before I do this, I need to show you a, um, we'll open up our interpreter and I need to show you a uh, method of strings. So let's go into IPython and I want to create a string and uh, we'll call it sentence and let's say the sentence is um, uh, I don't know. How about I love pizza. Okay. So in order to now what we're going to do is send now is a string but we're going to uh, use a method or a um, a built-in function that's associated with strings to find a substring within a string. So if I if I go like this, if I go uh, send dot find, and I go love, and this has to be a string, it gives me two. It returns two. So if you if you think about where that is in the string, it's returning where it is in the string. Okay, so if we come over here and I go, I love pizza, then the, the index integers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And obviously, here is the word love and it starts at index 2. So you can see that's what that's what send return. Now in the in the interpreter it just prints it out automatically, but obviously I could say uh, position equals and then position would be 2. However, what if I change the sentence to be I love um, lovely pizza. Uh, I'm just trying to use the word love twice. And so now if I search for the word love, it still gives me two. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is uh, let's go, let's go help string. Oh, um, no, is it help str, I think. Yeah. So, and let's go down to where it says find. There it is. So find is right here. Okay. So if it doesn't find the word, notice return negative one on failure. So let's let's get out of this Q to get out. And if I try it again, if I try, uh, let's say I try love spelt like that, it's going to give me negative one. Okay, um, so if I go if I go back to the help, and I go down back to find. Notice though that it can take these are optional. So whenever you see something that is in the square brackets here, so s is a string, and there's dot find. Now this sub means substring. So let's read this. Return the lowest index in S where the substring sub is found. That's what it's doing. Our substring was love. Such that sub is contained within S start to end. Now this is the cool part is that this this part here okay is optional. So here that stuff is optional. Notice the end is optional too. 
So you could only start with, you could only supply the beginning. Optional arguments, start and end, are interpreted as in slice notation. Okay? So, therefore, if I, let's get out of this again. Okay, so for example, um, if I start, so let, let's, let's go over here and let's finish up uh, this thing. So if I fix this, uh, just a sec, I gotta kind of erase this, or let me just type it up again. I love lovely pizza. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, that's, that's all we need right now. So what I'm going to say now is, listen, start looking for the word love from here. So obviously, if I start looking from 2, it's going to find it. It's going to find the first one, right? So if I go um, find, find love, but if I go comma, 2, it's still going to return 2. Because we're, we're, if I leave the 2 off, that's where we start looking. It's just like say, if I leave the 2 off, it's just like saying 0. Okay? So those, those two are exactly the same. Those uh, 12 and 13 are exactly the same, no difference. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say start looking for, from integer 3, position 3. Now it's not going to find the first love because it can only start looking from O-V-E, and that doesn't spell love. So let's try it. And I'll change this to a 3. And now look what it says. Whoa, it says I found it on 7. So if we go back, there it is. See? starting at 7. So now you have this kind of a, a way to find things and um, you can construct new strings. So what's the assignment that I want to give you? So I'm going to give you a word uh, Hopefully this isn't too inappropriate, but I'm going to say I crapped in a crappy crapper, okay? And this is going to be the input sentence, I crapped in a crappy crapper. Uh, but I want you to write a function so make a function called def, uh, let's call it um, cleanup, or I'm not really sure, I'm just making this up. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, but I'm going to call it cleanup. And the first uh, argument we're going to send it is the sentence. Okay, so the second argument is going to be the, let's say, the bad word. And the third argument is going to be a good word that we're going to replace it with. Um, now, in this case, so the, the function is going to return, not print anything, okay? The function is going to return uh, the cleaned up string, so uh, maybe it might return the uh, a new new sentence, for example. And it's your job in here to construct this new sentence. Now you're going to have to use string concatenation to do that with the plus symbol, and also you're going to have to use slices. Okay, remember how to take slices um, of strings. And also, you're going to have to use len, too. Because in this case, when we call the, the function, when we go, you know, clean up, 
and we, we send it a sentence, so let's say our sentence is equal to something, like the sentence above, and then we're going to send it sentence, we're going to send it, let's say, the bad word, which in this case was crap, and then the good word, in this case, which was poop. And so, um, now obviously this isn't going to do anything because we're not doing anything with this return value. So, um, we might say print here. And then that would work. Uh, now, if you, if you think about what it's, what's going to be returned, it should return I poo, right? So whenever we have the word crap, it should replace with poo, and then in a poopy pooper. Oops, I think that's actually an E. Okay, so um, pause the video now and give it a shot. Please, once again, do not watch the solution unless you try this. There's no learning that happens if you simply watch the solution. Okay, pause the video. So um, I feel like some of you guys might be having difficulty with this because this is something uh, that's not like a one-line solution. So I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a hint. Let's try, when you're stuck on these types of problems, let's try and uh, just do a little bit of it and um, just do one, the first instance to replace the first instance. So obviously you can see that here is what I want to replace from index 2 to 5. And what I would do to use string concatenation is I would take the first part, then I would, so let's maybe put a box around that, okay? Then I would concatenate the good word that I want to replace the bad word with. Then I would take the rest of the sentence, and, and that's going to start from here. Okay, So it's going to be P-E-D in. Now you don't have to replace all of them at once. Let's just do one thing at a time. So now this, okay? So essentially we've got three pieces. You've got the before, the middle, or what you're replacing, and then the after. So now think about taking string slices. So in terms of a string slice, if this was, if this was S, okay, uh, then this is going to be S from the beginning to, notice here, there's a two. So that's going to be a two. Then we're going to add the, well, in this case, you know, we could replace that with a variable, right? So let's replace it with um, the good word. And then, now we, there's another slice, and this is going to be from. Now, this is the tricky part here, because now if you look here, we, we don't want to start here. We want to start from, right? That's where it gets cut off. So 6. And all the way to the end, well, we don't have to specify the end. We could just go like that, OK? So if that, if we do that, that'll give us, at least that'll replace the first one. The question now is, obviously, when you write a program, you can't hard code numbers in like that. You have to create some type of mathematical formula 
to work for all instances. So now you have to ask yourself, how do we find this to where the word crap begins? That should be really clear to you that the to was when we went s dot find. What would we find? Well, what are we looking for? The bad word. That's how we get the two. Now you say to yourself, hmm, how do we get the six? So obviously we could put this in there, but I think it would look kind of bad. So we could, you know, we could say x equals and then replace the two with an x. That's fine. Now what about the six? Now the question about the six is, it's a little bit more complicated because now you'd say, all right, well, It depends on how long the bad word is. In this case, the bad word is one, two, three, four letters. It starts at two, and if you add four letters, you get to the rest of the sentence. So in other words, if we go two plus four, that's going to give us six. Two is where it starts. Right? And four is how long it is. And that is the beginning of the new sentence. That's the rest of the new sentence. So I think you can figure out what I'm going to do here. This is simply going to be x plus. Now, how do we get the four? Because there's the two, right? That's the x. This was 2. So that's x plus. That's the x. And therefore, I think it should be pretty clear now that the 4 is going to come from the length of the bad word. So if we go len the bad word, that's going to give us our starting position for there. And, you know. Uh, I don't I don't care what you want to call that you could call it y for example so now if I replace that if I said x equals s dot find bad s in this case is the sentence right well okay fine let, let me let's do it properly then so we'll shift we'll shift variables and I'll say x equals sen dot find bad. And then I would say y equals x plus len bad. Now I have my, now I've got my 2 and I've got my 6. Now I can construct the new sentence. So I can say sen equals sen. I'm just basically um, looking up here. So I can say sen equals sen from the beginning to x plus the good word plus the um, rest of the sentence, which is sen slice y to the end. Yay, I'm done. OK, great. But that only replaces the first word. What about this part and this part? Well, here's the question. is How many times does the bad word appear in the sentence? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. What type of a loop do you need to use in order to determine? Sorry, what type of a loop do you use when you don't know how many times you're going to do something? It's a while loop. So all this has to go inside of a while loop. The question is, how do you decide when to do the while loop? Well, if you find the word, the bad word, inside of sin, you've still got to take one out. 
Okay? So at this point, let's switch over to uh, let's switch over to Genie and um, maybe we can kind of you know look at uh, what we've typed here or what we've drawn and maybe uh, at the same time we can code. All right, so we let's make the function first. Let's go def clean up and it's going to accept a sentence. It's going to accept a bad word and then it's going to take the good word. And um, just so that we get proper syntax highlighting, let's save this. Let's save it in functions and let's save it as uh, uh, oops. Let's call it uh, clean sentence dot py. Okay, so now we've got some highlighting. So at this point, I'm going to say x equals just copying what I wrote down below. And I'm going to go bad. And then let's go y equals x plus len bad. And then I'm going to make a new sentence. And let's say sen equals sen uh, from the beginning to x plus the good word. We're going to paste it in there glue it in there, and, and then the rest of the sentence. So now we're going to go y all the way to the end. OK, and now you know what we're going to do? Just to test this out, let's return sen. OK, and now I'm going to say s equals i crapped in a crappy crapper. OK, and now I'm going to print, and I'm going to call cleanup. And then I'm going to uh, send s to send. And now I'm going to send a string literal. Uh, and then I'm going to replace the word with poo. OK? And now let's close the sentence. And now let's run this program. Yeah, yay, there it goes. It works. So it works for the first instance, but not the rest. For that, I don't know how many times it's going to occur. So here's my point. Why did I do this? <clears throat> I did this because I want you to break down a problem. Don't assume that you're, you can solve the whole thing all at once. You can't, many times you will not be able to solve problems like this without pen and paper. Where is my pen and paper? It's this thing. There's, you can see my pen and paper right there. Okay, that's my paper. It's, it's hard for me to do this without, uh, without, looking, at, without looking at this. So, um, by the way, if I just move this down, I think you can, oh no, you can't. Okay, so maybe I should have put numbers here. So 0, 1, oh no, 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 sorry, the numbers are actually there already. They're just up here. There, that's where they were. Okay, so you can see them. Um, so let's go back to the code now and at this point, we've kind of got the guts of the program done. What we need to do now is we need to recognize that this has to happen more than once. But the nice thing is, is everything's a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, this has to be a while loop. What's the condition for it? What's the condition that this has to recur for? Well, while the word while the bad word is still in the sentence. 
So you could say, uh, you could do this a couple of ways. You could say, while uh, send.find bad is not equal to, and remember um, what the return value is for something. Remember when we tried the, the, the lovely pizza example? What does find return if you, the, the, the string doesn't exist? Remember it was negative 1? So I say while send.find bat is not equal to negative 1, right? So I mean, if it's, if it's uh, 1, 2, 3, that means it's found, right? So we're now in a while loop, so we have to kind of tab all that stuff over. So I highlight it all and hit tab, OK? But we don't want the return in there, because if the return is inside the while loop, then um, it's going to finish after just replacing the first instance. So we, we, won't, we don't want that. So at this point, if I try to run it, let me try hitting F5 again. And it works perfectly. I pooped in a poopy pooper. Awesome. The other way, by the way, to do this, other than this, uh, would be to, let's say, comment this out. And I could say, while the bad word is in the sentence. And let's see if that works. So we're using in. Now, in works for substrings. So, so what is bad? Bad is a string. And sen is a string. So let's try this. And that works perfectly as well. OK? Perhaps this one's more understandable in terms of English. But in either case, um, that's what we were looking for. All right? Now. I'll let you guys go through it. So uh, I'm just going to uh, give you a sec to look at it, and uh, we'll continue. OK, we're back. And uh, I hope you understand this solution, but I have some good and bad news for you. Uh, there is an easier way to do this in Python, because as they say, this is a common saying, Python ha has batteries included. What that means is that, so what we've essentially done here in this code is we have done like a search and replace. Well, let's go see. Let's go back to our, uh, and let's, let's bring up the help for strings again. And I'm curious, is there a replace? Well, this is alphabetical. So F, I, L, oh, there is a replace. How does this work? Return a copy of S with all the occurrence of, of substring old replaced by new. If the optional argument count is given, only the first count occurrences are replaced. So, hmm. Notice replace takes old and new. And it returns, here's the return part, it returns a string. Let's try it. So if I, so do I have an S in here? No, do I have a sen? Yeah. So let's replace the word love with uh, I, I love with big. I, I big, bigly pizza. That doesn't make sense. I I hate hately pizza. I'm not sure. Let, how about this? How about let's, let's replace it with L U V. Let's replace L O V E with L U V. Right? That makes that makes more sense. Okay, so let's go sen dot replace and let's replace the word love. Okay, now this has to be a string with L-U-V. And boom, in one line, 
uh, it did it for me. So essentially, we could have come up here and we could essentially remove all this and simply go return sin dot replace bad with the good. Now, um, let's try running this and it works. And in fact, if, 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 um, if this works and th this replace already is built in, why do we have to have cleanup? We could simply just uh, replace this part, or actually here, let me control Z that. And I could take this whole thing out and just go print and just use the built-in, right? S dot replace uh, Notice this is uh, the the um, the use of this is slightly different, right? Because ours our cleanup function takes the string and then the bad word and then the good word. This one is built in, so it's the string dot replace. Ours isn't built in. Ours we had to write ourselves. In any case, let's run it, and it works just fine too. But listen. What's the purpose of recreating something that's already built into Python? Well, it makes us better programmers. And honest to goodness, there's been many instances where I have uh, learned about people getting interviewed for jobs in programming positions where they ask them to reproduce something that's built in to a language. Because most people will never actually code that. They'll just use the built-in stuff. But the question is, can you, can you do it? And so today, we did it. OK, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that solution. Here's your next assignment. Let's assume that we have a list of integers. We'll say it's L. And let's say it's populated with numbers inside. So we could have something like this, like this, like this, and, um, and so on. Now, our objective here is we're going to have to figure out which of these integers is the smallest integer. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to write a function, okay, we're going to call it def, and we're going to call it find min. And find min is going to take a list, and it's going to return the smallest value, okay? So in this case, if we, if we called find min on L, if we went print, find min and then if we send it the uh, list L so when we run this obviously it's pretty clear that for a human being to look at that list and say what's the smallest integer in that list it's obviously the answer is going to be 2 that's not hard. I can do that as a human with my eyeballs. So how do you code it? Well, if you wrote, wrote down this list, 3, 8, 4, 2, 11, 9, uh, one thing that's for sure that you're going to have to do is you are going to have to check each and every number because you don't really know where the smallest one is. Now, for a list that's only got six numbers in it like this, 
your eyeball can quickly pick out the smallest number. Human vision has uh, a lot of power that way. However, let's change this problem. Let me ask you, if it was 600 numbers, not 6, but 600, and, and you were looking at a list of 600 numbers, how would you find the smallest? So there, there must be some kind of a, a recipe or an algorithm or, a, or a, some kind of a procedure that you would have to go through. I want you to think about that. I'm not going to give it to you. I want you to think about how you seriously think about that for real. If you had a piece of paper, a big piece of paper in front of you with 600 numbers, could you simply look at it and instantaneously, instantaneously discover which one is the smallest one? And these could be big numbers too. Or would you have to go through the numbers one by one? And if you did go through them one by one, what would you do? This is crucial to understanding the way to solve this problem. So the only thing that I am going to add to this right now is that since you are going to go, have to go through all the numbers, that means you're going to have to iterate through them. And how do you iterate through a list? Let's do a quick review here. Here is one way. You could say for num in L and then now, obviously, we're not going to print them, but you can do whatever you want with them. Check them, uh, but just to print them uh, is an example of iterating through it. And so sim simply, here's one way of doing it, okay? Here's the other way of doing it, and you have to be familiar with both. For x in range... len l right and then you'd go print lx so I know the top one seems easier and in this case they both work but you still have to be comfortable with both so once again uh, I'm not going to show you the solution in this uh, lesson we'll, we'll go over the solution in the next one but good luck, okay? And thanks for watching today.